uh, in this problem we want to talk about the teeth extension okay teeth extension okay, theorem here of course this theorem is stated in R but there is a topological analog of this theorem in uh, spaces where the um, uh, in normal topological spaces huh? uh, uh, if you take a closed subset uh, of uh, normal topological spaces then you have this kind of uh, extension that we are doing in R but so here we are just dealing with what the real analysis of the real line okay so we are just looking at uh, this theorem in uh, the case of the real line okay it's also known by the way just for the sake of as this Urizon Brewer extension theorem okay so so what do we have we have a, a F which is a closed subset of R we have F defined from the closed subset to R which is continuous Okay, and the question is, how do we construct a function g from r to r, which extend continuous, which extends f, meaning that g restricted to f is equal to f, and in the case where uh, f, the supremum of f is finite, then they have the same. Okay. So, uh, uh, a normal approach is very easy, is, is the fact that f being closed, so what we do, we take r minus f, so we know that this one is open, okay, and therefore we know that r minus f is a union of intervals, and the ins are disjoint, so disjoint open intervals okay so let's call them a and b n for the sake of okay so r the complement of f is a n b n okay so uh, the idea is very simple is that it's clear that the a n's and b n's are in f okay and I'm assuming of course that a n's and b n are numbers because uh, we may have one of the ans may be equal to minus infinity and one of the bns may be equal to plus infinity so we may have one of them equal to minus infinity uh, the left end points and one of the right end points equal to plus infinity okay we may it depends on f okay so, <coughs> uh, if uh, uh, the ANs and BNs are numbers, they belong to F because they are not in the complement. Okay. So the idea here is what F, the function little f, is defined on capital F. So now, how do we define it outside? So the whole point here is, so let's draw it, and you will understand. So here it is. So we have AN, BN. So we know that our function is not defined here, but it is defined here at these two points because they are in. I'm, I'm assuming, of course, the picture here just to illustrate what's going on, okay, to understand it, okay. So, so what is f of a n? f of n, let's say, is somewhere here, okay. So this is your f of a n, and what is your f of b n? Somewhere, okay here so this is your f of bn okay so basically what you want to do is just uh, naturally to extend your function f uh, between this uh, uh, a n and bn in a way that you join continuously these two points okay so you want to join these two points okay and that's the idea so uh, of course if you do Let's say there are many ways that you can do it, huh, basically here. So let's 
So you can do something like this, okay, etc., etc. But keep in mind, what we want to do is to keep uh, a control over the absolute value of GN, okay? So that's why. So one way to do it is to take uh, the segment. Very natural. Okay, just take this segment. Okay? So you, you want to go through these two points. So here, so here, your g of x, okay, restricted to this interval a and b n, okay? So on a n b n, so you want this to be a convex combination of these two points. So this will give you some constant alpha time uh, so it's going to be alpha time f of a n plus 1 minus alpha time f of b n x equal alpha a n plus 1 minus alpha b n some of you may wonder what I'm doing. In fact, let me just explain exactly because, uh, yeah, I mean, we can find the slope of the line. In other words, we can easily say that g of x, in fact, is equal to uh, f, the slope, f of bn minus f of an over uh, bn minus an time x minus an plus f of a n. Yeah, I, I, I can do this. That's not an issue. But what I want to show you is something very interesting to, to help us with the inequality that we are looking for. It's the same, by the way. Huh? So, so what is exactly that I'm doing? Let me explain and you will understand. So we have this point, which is a n, f of a n. We have this point. It doesn't matter which one is higher. This, this, this is pure geometry, okay? And we have a point in between in the segment. Huh? So I'm looking at this segment and I'm looking at this point. Okay? So this point, so this is a n, f of a n. This is b n, f of b n. And this is x, g of x. So you see, x, g of x is a convex combination. So you have x, g of x which is equal to alpha a n f of a n plus 1 minus alpha time b n f of b n, where alpha is between 0 and 1. So this is just a little bit of geometry. And this is very, very important. Of course, if you are wondering what alpha is, alpha is equal to b n minus x which is positive because x is between a n and b n over b n minus a n and since b n minus a n is the length of the interval is bigger than b n minus x therefore this is between 0 and 1 okay so this uh, picture tells us what is very important that absolute value of g of x is going to be less or equal than alpha because it's positive and I'm using the properties of the absolute value alpha f of a n plus uh, 1 minus alpha absolute value of f of bn. Okay, so this is why it's a lot easier to prove the inequality. I, c I could have done it differently as I showed you before, but this one is really beautiful because this is less than alpha sup of f of x for x in f plus 1 minus alpha sup of absolute value of f of x for x in f, which is exactly the soup of f of x for x in f. So you see, for every x in the open interval a n b n, okay? So basically, once you have done it, so now uh, we stay, uh, we are not completely done. This is when we assume that a n and b n are finite. So what happens if a n is equal to minus and bn is bounded. For sure, we cannot have 
for a certain interval that a n is minus infinity and b n is plus infinity. This means just that capital F is the empty set. So, so it means that uh, so special. So before we complete the picture, so here assume that one a n is equal to minus infinity and b n is finite. I told you they cannot be both infinite. Huh? Okay, so in this case, what do you have? You have this point and nothing, right? So in this case, we just take what? The constant, okay? And obviously, gn, so this is your, so g of x is just equal to f of bn. And again, the inequality we do have as well, that g of x is less or equal than the soup of f of x when x belongs to f as well okay and the same goes if you have uh, assume that b 1 bn is equal to plus infinity and a n is finite so what you have you have a n here you have a point okay and bn is plus infinity so in this case again for the same same stuff we take what f of x g of x sorry g of x equals f of a n and again we have absolute value of gx less or equal than sup of f of x for x belongs to f so as you can see this extension is continuous obviously okay by construction and for every x in R, we have soup of absolute value of g of x. Sorry, um, for x in R, which is less or equal than soup of f of x for x in f. So this is the way we build it. We have this inequality, but in fact, this is obviously we have this this is obvious why because if you restrict on f the soup of g of x for x in f but this is just f of x so that's how you get what the inequality so by construction our function g is continuous okay and it preserves some kind of the supremum of the function f of x of course assuming that the supremum is finite because if it's infinite then uh, there is nothing to prove huh? so if it's infinite this one will be infinite and this one will be infinite anyway that's obvious so only you focus on the case where the supremum is finite not infinite okay